Hey folks, it's Tim back with another review. Today I'll be covering the PowerTech Hero. So the PowerTech Hero did arrive in this pretty nifty uh, cardboard box that was actually sealed with a tape with, I assume, the serial number and magnetic flap here. It does also cover very quickly some of the features. So it is feature a Cree XML to U2 emitter with a max of 960 lumens output. This is a built-in charging flashlight, so that's why it says 4.5 amps uh, mobile charger for smartphones or iPads. Although, not too sure about that latter statement, but we'll get into that later. It is water resistant, there's four illumination levels and a strobe mode. It could cast a beam out to 400 meters and it dubs itself as the ultimate rechargeable compact light. So within this box, they did manage to squeeze in um, ample foam padding, cover um, this little warning symbol here that tells you that the tail cap is not tightened because it's shipped actually as a kit with a battery included. So just a little reminder that you need to tighten the tail cap to make sure that the light does work. You got the instructions and this um, pretty nice uh, hard shell holster that is uh, form fitted. So I'll get into that a bit later, the flashlight itself. And the accessories include a lanyard, a USB charging cable with a micro USB plug, and two spare rings, although you only see one here because I've already had to use one. I'll get into more of that later. So at first blush, the Hero looks pretty much like a standard side switch flashlight, rather nondescript, and there's no tail cap switch on there. And it's got a Kremlin lighted bezel. You can see the anti-reflection coating on there. And here's a close-up of the XML2 emitter. It isn't until after you're reading the manual that you find out this plate here is actually a cover for the USB charging ports, both to charge the flashlight itself, as well as to act as a charger. So, although it says in the manual to slide it down, I'd really strongly advise against doing that, especially if your O-rings didn't come well greased. Now the reason for that is because, so as you may or may not know, the O-rings are obviously your number one defense in terms of uh, water ingress, right? So if they are not properly greased, the main reason why they actually need to be greased, not just on the outside, but the inside as well, is because as the parts move and you twist and whatnot, you want to make sure that this O-ring never binds. The moment it bunches, it, cause, it may cause damage to the O-ring itself and that's where you know the failures or defects start in the O-ring and water ingress comes in from there. So a lot of times I always strongly recommend that you don't merely lube the outside of the O-ring but I would actually suggest that you actually remove it, lube the inside of the O-ring, slide around a little bit to make sure that everything about it is smooth. Now it's especially important on this light because as I had mentioned in the opening, I already had to replace one O-ring because it's got just a pinch there. So it looks like at one point it did get snagged, so I had to replace this to make sure that the water uh, resistance wasn't compromised. Now back to the charging aspect of it. So as mentioned, there is a micro USB port here so that you could charge the 26650 battery within the light itself. And there is a standard USB port output here so that you could charge your iPod, iPad, Android devices or whatnot. Although I was able to charge um, iPod, iPhone, whatnot successfully, the iPad it didn't quite do it. It got a message saying that it would not charge. Of course, I only tested it out on my iPad Air so far. I will test it on other iPads, but that's going to be covered a little bit deeper into this video. So for now, I'm going to put this cover back on and, and again, I strongly advocate a twisting motion so that way you go with the natural rotation of the O-rings itself rather than just simply sliding it forward and potentially bunching the O-ring. Now to illustrate that I simply got the O-ring on my thumb. Now as you're sliding forward you can see that the O-ring actually rotates in and on itself, right? You definitely don't want that to happen. You'd rather go with a natural rotation, and like I said, as long as it's properly lubricated, it will go in the direction, and you have a much less chance of causing any damage or bunching. So getting into the rest of the features of the light, there are these um, ample texturing throughout the light, and it does, it is reasonably aggressive, so it provides decent grip. The top bezel is removable, so, but it, it is one piece, so meaning this crenellation is not separate from this entire head that I'm rotating right now. Upon removing the head, you're going to see these two detents here in the reflector. So you could get like a needle nose plier, push it in there to remove the reflector that holds the lens and the O-ring in place. It is reasonably deep. 
So you figure it's that whole length there. I'll get measurements a bit later. And it is very, very nice and smooth. So that helps give it a decent punch in terms of throw. And here's yet another close-up shot of the emitter on the board itself. There looks to be decent room for modding if uh, one so chose perhaps to put in a new tree emitter or whatnot. It's natural to assume that because this is a white switch that it's glow in the dark. It is actually not. It does not. I've um, blasted it with a heavy bright light, but it does not glow in the dark, alas. This is the only switch on the light and it operates both the on off as well as allow for mode switching, which I'll cover in the UI section. The entire head itself can be removed from the battery body, likewise for the tail cap, so you could pretty much take it apart into three sections. So here you see at the base of the head is simply just a spring uh, soldered it onto the back of the PCB board. It did come with a 4500 milliamp per hour battery, and as mentioned, the tail cap is removable. There is nothing more than a large spring to conduct the return path. The threads are identical at either end, so you could thereby reverse the battery tube if you so choose. Case in point, I now have the tube reversed from when I first started the video. Again, just to suit one preference if you so happen to like the logo facing one way versus the other. The tail cap does feature two mounting points for the included lanyard, and it is of a proper size, thus obviating the need for a mini clip ring. And that pretty much covers the designs and features at a high level. Now size-wise, it is currently the most compact uh, 2650 size light. Of course, to be fair, uh, these are turbo heads and that one does feature a larger bezel. So from left to right, that's Shadow's JM26. This is Light in 7's Max X3A. That's actually a triple XML light. And this is Shadow's JM07 Pro, the original JM07 model. You have PowerTax Hero here. And then, by comparison, a single 18650 size light in the form of the through night links. In terms of overall handling, I find that it fits very nicely in my medium-sized hands. As previously mentioned, this texture is decently aggressive enough that it affords a pretty nice grip. And in underhand mode, with the rest of my fingers rest between the, the nooks around the light. So again, I feel it has a very nice solid grip. Likewise, in an overhand grip with my pinky on the side switch to be able to change modes or operate it, I do feel, again, it feels very nice and solid in the hand. I don't ever feel like it's going to uh, slip overall. Operation of the light is very straightforward and simple. Upon changing the battery, the light will always default to its Firefly mode. And to turn on the light, you simply just depress the switch once. Uh, that is actually on, as you can see there. This is in Firefly mode. And you're likely seeing that uh, flashing on the camera. Then you press in the hold to cycle it upwards to the next level. So Firefly, low, medium, high, strobe, and then back down again. So you're always going to have to cycle through that. It does have memory mode, but only as long as the battery is not changed. So here it is on the load mode. Shut off the light, it's one simple press. Turn it back on again, and as you can see, it stays in that mode. Now one thing I do notice is there's ever a so slight delay when it turns on. So time it between the sound of the click versus when you actually see the light come on. And not only that, I don't know if you noticed that just now, but when I shut off the light, you could actually see that it, upon the first depress, the light actually momentarily shuts off, and then upon letting it go, the light fully turns off, so... I guess it's just, again, minor quirks. It may affect those with OCD, but um, just pointing that out. So I'm back here at uh, Jamestown, Rhode Island. Uh, at one of my favorite camping sites off of Fort Getty uh, Berg Road and right now I'm just testing to see if the Hero in charging mode can charge my uh, T-Mobile hotspot so that little lightning symbol within the battery indicates that it is charging right now and the fact that 4G LTE even works out here in the beautiful ocean area is fantastic because uh, just in case I need to uh, check in on work and whatnot far away from um, any source of power so it's very handy to have this device here so I can recharge my devices. Okay, it's the final day of our camping trip. 
And I just want to quickly show off the charging aspect of the uh, PowerTac Hero. So, kind of like what you might expect at a campsite with a pitch canopy. Got my tripod there ready to do a comparo shot. There's a temp off in the background, so I'm not talking too loudly because um, there are people sleeping. And of course, the prerequisite bugs that infests every campsite. But, but to get back on topic, to engage the charging mode of the PowerTac Hero, you just simply press and hold with the light off. And when you see that red light turn on, that means it is ready for charging. Now, the micro USB port on this side is for charging of the battery itself. So the 26650 cell in here. And then this USB port is to charge your devices. So unfortunately, since I'm filming this by hand, I'm going to um, do my best to get that plugged in. I haven't really used my devices all that much during the trip, so... I do have a few messages here. It's my messed up iPod. Unfortunately, I did drop it, so you do see the uh, damaged screen there on the bottom. But at least in the top right corner, you do see that the lighting icon is there on the battery to indicate that it is charging. Now, one thing I do want to point out, though, is that even though this indicates that it is on, if you, during charging, if you have a device plugged in already and you suddenly depress once to shut it off, as you can see the light is off right now, but yet that charging will still remain on as indicated by the icon there. So on the negative side that might give you a false belief that you've shut off the charging when in fact it actually is still charging so you, it'll continue to drain the battery there. But on the positive side, now that you're aware of this during charging, you can probably disengage that to reduce just a little bit of draw. I mean, after all, when you're camping, every little bit of energy conservation counts. So now one thing though is that this is not powerful enough to charge my iPad here at least. So just as a quick test there, unplug that. And after you disengage the wire in the off mode, the next time you replug it back in in the off mode, it will stay off. So now I'm going to go ahead and initiate the power. So you will see that the it does indicate that it's receiving power. As with most uh, iPads, I've noticed that even though it says it's not charging, in fact, it really is charging, but just that it's at a much slower rate. Now, I obviously, <laughs> I don't have my equipment on me to test the uh, charging rate, amperage, and stuff like that, but uh, when I get back, I will try to, you know, get all those measurements for you in this video. So to wrap up the charging aspect of the PowerTech Hero, thus far I haven't been able to get it to successfully charge uh, any of my iPads. So earlier in the segment you saw it was uh, giving the not charging statement with the iPad Air. Likewise on an iPad Mini, as you can see it's right there, it says not charging. And then last but not least, with the iPad 3, Again, it has no problem detecting that it is receiving power source of some type, but still it's giving the not charging in the top right corner there. And I did leave this plugged in for a while because again, there are times where it says it's not charging, but yet in fact, it really is. It's just charging at a slower rate. So I'll be in contact with PowerTech about this. Um, but as far as my iPod goes, as I had demonstrated earlier, it has no such problems being charged up. I'll continue to test various other devices, but in terms of charging the internal 26650 size battery, you do not need to touch that switch. You simply take your micro USB plugged into a power source and plug that right into the PowerTech Hero. And that blue flashing light indicates that it is charging. I haven't completed a full charge cycle yet, so I don't know if that light shuts off, but I'll put that into my comments later on. However, there's one pretty cool thing that I would like to dub pass through charging. So with the PowerTech Hero in the charging state, meaning the internal 2660 size battery, if you attach the iPod now, without putting it into a charging mode, it will actually do a pass through and it will start charging the device. As you can see there. So it is kind of like charging both devices at once. Uh, unfortunately, I would have to rig something elaborate to take uh, current draw of both this one as well as this one, so I don't have that set up yet. But I'd imagine that doing this combination would drastically decrease or half the time of the charging rate. So again, I'll get that cooked up in the future and put that into the comments as well.
For those of you who have been following my videos, um, again, thanks a lot for your support. But as you likely know, I've actually been pretty much offline for quite a while now. Haven't really done too much flashlight videos and haven't really been into the hobby. I've really been trying to reduce it because, again, time, family, work. It's just been uh, really, really busy, so I haven't had a lot of time to allocate to this. So because of that, to be honest, I didn't even really know too much about the company. I did a quick research and it looked like they had some models that were similar to a few flashlight manufacturers, but this particular one, I guess, you know, I guess this design motif is similar to some of the flashlights I have reviewed, but overall it is a rather, I guess, stay design, right? It's not like overkill in terms of, you know, all these special carvings or even like, say, the laser engraving, but Bottom line is that I, I really didn't know what to expect from this company. I've never handled any of their products, but after having this for a few weeks now and bringing it with me to camping, I say I'm reasonably impressed by it. It does feel extremely solid. Overall, the anodizing finish is done very nicely. There's none missing on these corners here and also none missing between the texture, the grooves, and again, as I mentioned, all the various corners. It is consistent, as you can see here. There is no one part that's necessarily darker or different shade than the other. Laser engraving is all very nicely done without any splotchiness. And the parts just go together very smoothly. And I'm gonna call out the guy who criticized the fact that I care about that. And well, so obviously, if you're a flashlight enthusiast like I am, you realize why, right? Because again, it just goes to show that a company cared enough about their products that it manufactured things to exacting tolerances. And I actually find it ironic because the guy was actually a gun enthusiast. So um, he of all people should understand what it means to have machine parts operate very smoothly. You know, of course, this isn't a gun, but still, it's nice to see that these parts all operate very smoothly. All of these threads are done very nicely. None of them are square cut, but as mentioned, I had no problems with it. The only one thing that I did encounter was, as mentioned, that topo rink was um, snagged and I actually forgot to mention this earlier but after you remove the tube this ring is removable so you will see that there are actually two o-rings under here and that's how it keeps this balance and as mentioned it protects it from water ingress so the first thing you want to do if you've purchased this size to make sure again that those o-rings are well looped and of course it, that does create a problem itself only because if you've looped it, it will catch on this ring and upon sliding it back and forth, you will bound to be, um, you are bound to get some around this area which is exposed to your hand and whatnot. So just something to keep in mind, don't overdo it, but at the same time, you do want to make sure that there is sufficient lubrication on those O-rings. Can't stress that enough on this particular light. So bottom line is I definitely feel this ring says one of the um, better quality lights of all the ones that I have reviewed. Of course, it remains to be seen how it holds up long term and um, again, I need to find out more about the company. One additional point that I felt was worthy of highlighting is the fact that PowerTag does have a lifetime uh, no hassle warranty and that is actually covered in their manual here. So as you can see, it says it warrants their illumination tools to be free from defects in workmanship and materials, including any LEDs housed within for the lifetime of the original parts. Of course, that I guess that is the caveat, right? The lifetime of the parts are specified by individual parts manufacturers. Overall, not too many manufacturers uh, offer that, uh, aside from Surefire and I think perhaps a few of the other American manufacturers. But for those who have owned PowerTech products and have contacted their servers, I'd be interested to hear your feedback. And of course, feel free to throw that into the comment section to share with others as well. So as usual, I've got my x -Tech HD 450 set up to take Lux readings. However, though, I did tighten up the process because as I noticed, I failed to take into account the four to five inch offset off the door that the light meter is at now. So I did push the camera back and the distance where I'm measuring by four to five inches. So I was previously expecting about 235 reading. I'm now expecting about the 220 to 225 range and it is there with the Xeno G10 V2 because this light is perfectly regulated. The camera settings as usual are at 1 50th of second at f1.8, sunny white balance, locked in at ISO 400. So the first light will be PowerTax Hero and the company has posted a uh, 450 meter beam distance so that translates into about 50.6k lux at one meter or a uh, reading of about between 
2021 to 2029 uh, lux at 5 meters. However, I'm not getting anywhere near that. I'm closer to about... As you can see there, it's settling about 710 range. So that's not even anywhere near half of that. Of course, caveat here is that I don't know what um, they use to calculate that beam distance, right? I'm using ANSI standards, which um, basically stipulates that measuring this about 30 seconds or more at a distance of five meters and then calculating it. So you can see that the real distance I'm calculating is in the caption based upon this reading. Next up is Shadow's JM07 Pro. This is one of the uh, original version of the JM07. This does have an orange peel reflector and pumps out roughly about 800 lumens in a neutral white beam. This one I have no values for, so I'm just you know showing you what the readings are, and just give a few more seconds to settle down. All right, so now about the 30 second mark, I'm in the three hundred ninety range or so thereabouts. And that translates to the beam distance in the caption. Now, while the JM07 was more of an apples to oranges, the um, through night links is not. Despite being an 18650 size light, the diameter of the head is reasonably comparable to the PowerTac Hero, which is the reason why I chose this light. And it's not reading too far off from where I read last time even with the offset. So now I'm reading about 712, 710-ish. And that translates into the beam distance in the caption. The overall spill of the beam is roughly 70 degrees and the hotspot is pretty nice and tight at about 10, I would say between 10 to 15 degrees or so. Beam profile-wise, owing to its smooth reflector and uh, decent size overall, it is a okay thrower. So I've got the through nine links on my right hand side and the power tech here on my left hand side. And as you can see, overall, they're pretty similar. As you can see probably on the left hand side, the power tech hero does have a slightly purple shield to it. And that's because of the pretty aggressive anti-reflective coating on the lens. And then on the right hand side, you're probably noticing the ring there around the through nine links beam. That's because of the uh, very shiny ref uh, the bezel at the tip. And overall, even at distance, their hotspots are pretty comparable. Right now, I do have this in sunny white balance, so the, I would say the color renditions probably at least to what I'm seeing on the screen, a little bit more um, stronger than what I'm seeing in real life. So meaning that the power attack hero is not that purple here. As an initial conclusion, overall, I find the PowerTech Hero to be a pleasant light to use. I'm not fond of the UI as you've known um, based upon my previous videos, that the fact that you have to kind of cycle through the strobe, um, especially in this day and age where many other manufacturers have found ways to implement different UIs, I would like to see them change that on a future implementation. But thus far, the build quality, it's rock solid. Um, haven't had any issues with it, brought it with me to camping. Have had it for over a month now. And again, it's performed flawlessly. I think one thing that might be pretty neat is if they actually implemented threads here so that this actually threads on to add additional safety layer so you don't accidentally yank it out and uh, potentially compromise your water resistance. Although I haven't gone into a deep dive yet of both the um, charger function 
as well as the charging function of the Hero. I'll get into that in the future, but thus far I haven't had any issues with it, uh, with the exception of the inability to charge the iPad. So again, that's something I'm going to be in contact with PowerTech about, and I will put that into my comments. So bottom line, I find it to be a very competent light, and it has performed flawlessly thus far. Although again, owing to my lack of experience with this company nor any of their other products, uh, would like to hear back from owners of PowerTech products, you know, just to see how their other lights hand up. But thus far, um, pretty cool PowerTech. Thanks a lot for sending this. As part of FTC disclosures, the PowerTech Hero Kit was provided by PowerTech for review. Thanks again for watching.